Well, I caught up with Kim Snow from Google, who'd just done a very interesting panel, talking really about this whole interconnectivity between artificial intelligence, uh, data, and what we could do with it. And I started off by asking her how we can add elements of humanity to that integration. Um, I think the most interesting part to me is what we mean when we say data. And um, data is everything. I work with a, a, a data scientist and I was asking him, I'm like, how can, I, how can I use data to inform better ideas to make creative? And he said, that's like asking me how to use words and colors to make creative. And I was like, whoa, my God, you're totally right. He's like, every single thing that's happening around you is data. And the question is, what are you paying attention to? How curious are you? Where are you asking why? And how are you ready to react to it? Um, I think a lot of times, and I said this on the panel, we use data to, to say, yes, what I did was right, versus, oh my God, I'm so curious why 68% of people do this. It's not enough for me to just make a decision. I want to start digging deeper and to know how and why and all that. Um, I think another really interesting thing is that we're all very frightened of things being too niche, for example. We like scale. That's a word Google likes too. Um, and yet we live in a world where we all really like to observe other things. And so I feel like using data to talk to a small group of people really well, which can only really be done when you're doing something that's kind of focused, is something the masses will want to observe. And, and is there a tension between sort of everybody wants to do things at scale? I mean, they're the things that get noticed, they get talked about, versus actually the, yeah. the pinpoint ability now to be able to talk to very niches and actually have a great impact with it as well. A thousand percent. Oh my God, I still see briefs, and I'm sure a lot of people do, I'm sure you do, that you see a brief that's like, I'm talking to women 18 to 49. I'm like, you could find two women born in the exact same day and they're the exact same age and they don't want the two same things at all. So how, what do you think it's going to mean to this giant human group of people that you're trying to have any meaning to? And so what we try to stress from a data perspective or from a human perspective is behavior versus you know demos. Of course, you can apply a demo layer at the end of it. Um, but also thinking what's something really interesting happening within that group that everyone else might want to know about or hear about or learn about. Um, and I think that does take a little bit of bravery. That's not a system that this industry does well. We're not always rewarded for you know, trying something new. They want you to reach as many people as possible. And I think that's where even for Google, for ad units, um, for messaging, for targeting, that's where we can start to get super creative if we just pay attention to, to signals. Now, one of the things that was also discussed in the panel was this whole sort of notion of, of, of a moment. And, I, and I'd like to explore that in a little bit more depth yes. because I, I think we need to touch the surface. Um, you know, moments are maybe serendipitous. Um, moments sort of just sort of happen. Yeah. Um, we're now talking about creating uh, moments or may maybe even curating moments. Mm -hmm. What is a moment now and how do you manufacture it? Can you manufacture it? I mean, moments are, they can be very personal. And so that's where we try to think, okay, somebody in a moment of need who might need things, how can, what does that moment look like? Maybe that is kind of similar across different mindsets. Maybe the moment most people need, I don't know, a wicker chair <laughs> or a car. Maybe there's something universal that we could think about. But then there's also these larger moments. This is the first year. This is so awesome. So we're coming up into February. And this is usually the time where everyone's like, well, let's do something around Valentine's Day. Um, and this is the first time that- Oh my gosh, is Valentine's Day coming up soon? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, hey, yes, yeah, so yeah, write a note down there. You're welcome. Note to um, self. Yeah, <laughs> data point. Yes. Um, but what's been really interesting is this is the first year, and it's not the first year necessarily that this has been a, a thing, but we've had more clients coming to us to be like, well, we want to do something for Galentine's Day. Which, as far as I know, start on a Parks and Rec, um, which is when you get all your chicks together. And so you could ignore that, but if somebody was listening on Reddit and listening out there and realized people were using this word and doing stuff, I love that idea that there's all this noise in this corner, but now there's something else we can do. So that's kind of a bigger moment. Now it's a more focused one, but I'm kind of curious to see what would come out for that. So I think, again, it all goes back to listening. Everything you want to know as a marketer, the humans are telling you. It's out there. You just have to look in new, different places and be really curious and kind of be brave to try it out. You might find out that you don't want to bank your entire year's budget on Galentine's Day, but if you take a chance there in the moment, you really might get something out of it that teaches you something else for further down the year. To do that, you've got to be brave, haven't you? You've you got have to, to be you, so brave. You've got to not worry about, well, we tried it, it didn't work. Yeah. We tried it, we didn't work, we learned something and we're going to move on and I do always say something you else new. Totally, you can't fail if you're learning. 
that's probably the number one thing I can, I, for a long time, and it's been, I'm a creative director, and it's the one thing you hear focus group, you hear testing, and your heart bursts into flames because you're like, oh my God, they're going to find out what I did that I thought was great isn't good. And that is not what we want to be doing with data. That is not what we want to be doing. Even some of the biggest controversial ads or you know, ideas that have come out, we all learned from it. When that Pepsi ad came out, people were still like, okay, well, here's what I would do different. I would think of it differently. That was, that got us all talking and it got us all thinking. Um, and so I say, put stuff out there. And that's where you really have to change the systems of honestly agencies um, and brands on what they see as success. And there should be these moments where we're like, we're going to try something new. We don't know how it's going to go, but our goal is not to sell this much. Our goal is to learn this much and that will inform the next thing. And really, I'd love to see a world where that's how we write briefs is because of the thing we learned from the last experiment. Now, you spent a number of years at Digitas, you moved there to, to Google. Mm -hmm. What's it like being a creative in Google, which you know, I suppose many of us watching this view of Google is sort of very engineering uh, yeah. sort of focus. What's it like to be a creative in an engineering environment? When you work at an agency, you're really focused on your clients and you go really deep. Um, across a lot of different things. And going to Google, you're obviously working a lot of, uh, across a lot of different clients. And so you're actually getting smarter in a weird way, a more sideways way, horizontal, than kind of going deep. And that is so helpful. Like, it's also something a lot of clients ask for. They're like, show me examples of great stuff people in my industry have done. And it's like, no, I want to show you what everyone's doing. And so I feel like I've gotten smarter, even though the skill set's different. Um, that you can see the entire industry as a whole, not even just brands, but also agencies. And I feel that that's kind of a gift. It's kind of a treat to be able to give these people information that they wouldn't normally have. Internally, I realize that Google's a very creative company, and yet when it comes to creative uses of some of our things, like data, ad units, things that maybe you don't wake up in the morning as a creative director at an agency and be like, I can't wait to do a bumper ad. But when you think about the story and the problem you're trying to solve and the data available, you realize that there's a role for those things. And that's what I try to do. I try to say, no, you have. we have so many toys in the toy box. Let me help you figure out how to do the most awesome things with them. Um, so it's actually really kind of freeing. I don't know if every creative director would like it, um, but I really like it a lot. I feel like it's actually quite helpful to the industry, and I'm also learning a lot every day about it. Well, if you're learning a lot every day, that can't be bad at all. Kim bad. Snow from Google, thank you very much thank indeed for you being with much. us for stream. Thanks very much. It's been awesome. Thank you so much.